All right, I've decided I love this RV. I only want to travel in RVs from here on out. I just got back from a trip to Utah and that place feels like another planet. One minute I felt like I was on Mars and the next minute I felt like I was on Mercury. I've been to all five of Utah's national parks, all known as the Mighty Five, and they are incredible. But Utah has so much more to offer. So I decided to take a road trip by myself to 10 of Utah's most beautiful, lesser known locations. It's hard to believe these places are even real. Stay tuned, join me on this road trip to the top 10 lesser known locations in Utah beyond the mighty five. First up is the Pink Lake. I saw pictures of this place and had to verify it was real, and it is. It is literally pink. The pink portion is located in Gunnison Bay, which is the northwestern part of the Great Salt Lake. The pink color comes from a type of bacteria called halophilic bacteria that flourishes when the salt level rises. There is this railroad that cuts through the lake and on one side the salt level is higher and then the other side it's lower so you get this amazing contrast of pink and blue. Next up is the Bonneville Salt Flats. Of all places I went to on this trip, I was the most excited to come here. It's a massive salt desert which was formerly part of a bigger lake that included the Great Salt Lake. And when it dried up, it left an enormous flat salt desert. The contrast of the white salt with the mountains and the blue sky in the background was just mind-blowingly beautiful. You can even drive right onto the salt flats, which was super fun. You just have to make sure the salt is hard because you can get stuck, and I, I did see a few people get stuck. You can even taste the salt, which I did, and no surprise, it tastes just like table salt. Next up, Goblin Valley. This place is in the middle of nowhere in Utah. The contrasting layers of color and rock formations were just striking. Similar to Bryce Canyon, it has thousands of hoodoos which have formed because of wind and water erosion over time. The hoodoos often had little holes that looked like eyes which made them look like goblins. You could basically run all through the park amongst the hoodoos, and I really felt like I was in the wild wild west out there because when I drove, there were signs saying, 60 miles to the nearest gas station and I just thought about how important it is to have a reliable car and how 20, 30 years ago these trips would have been kind of scary because cars would break down a lot more often back then. If you break down out there, you're going to be stuck for a while. But if you can make it to Goblin Valley, definitely go. It is an absolutely beautiful part of Utah. Next on the list is one of my favorite spots that I saw. It's this out of the way rock formation called Long Dong Silver. Don't ask me why. I had to drive off road and then hike through soft muddy dirt to get there, but it was worth the wait. It just sticks up like a knife into the sky. There was absolutely no one else there when I was there. And the whole time I just kept thinking to myself, where am I? It's this gray desolate land covered in a yellow and white dusting. It reminded me of the planet Mercury. There were other rock formations to explore in the area too. If this were in a national park, there would be a railing around it and a line of people. It just goes to show you that there is so much more to see. The next stop on this trip through the solar system brings us from Mercury to Mars. I left my RV before the sun rose and headed over to this mind-blowing spot. It was full of these red, white, and blue soft mounds. It was absolutely beautiful and just another one of the hidden gems in Utah. What really surprised me is that it was only a few miles away from the totally gray landscape where Long Dong Silver was. I would have loved to take a geologist with me to understand how in the world these places formed 
and why they all seem to land in Utah. Next stop is another unworldly place, Factory Butte. As with most of these locations, I was the only one there. This massive rock formation shoots up out of the mudflats with gray on the bottom and yellow on the top. There's basically no vegetation in the area, so it doesn't even feel like Earth. It turns out, Utah used to be completely underwater, and some of the layers of rock that you see were formed from the remnants of the marine animals that used to be there. In fact, a local told me that she used to go to Factory Butte with her father to collect shark's teeth. Pretty amazing to know sharks were once swimming over this dry, desolate land. Next up on the list is Leprechaun Canyon. I had not planned to go here, but whenever I travel, I make it a point to have conversations with people who live in the area and ask them, where are the best spots to go? They live there, they know. So Leprechaun Canyon was actually recommended to me by two uh, people who lived in the area. It's another very remote spot with hardly anyone around. After a short hike, I made it to the incredible Slot Canyon that got more and more narrow. I was lucky enough to make it at exactly the right time of day when the sun shined through the small crack above and all the way down to the ground. It was absolutely magical. National Parks in the country, Great Basin National Park. It's a very remote location near the border of Utah and Nevada and actually sits in Nevada, but is worth including. It's home to the Lehman Caves and Wheeler Peak, Nevada's second tallest mountain, and the Bristlecone Pines, the oldest living species in the world at 4,800 years old. I took a tour of Lehman Caves with a park ranger. This cave is famous for its parachute shields and cave turnips. I had hoped to climb Wheeler Peak, but it snowed that day and they closed the road to Wheeler Peak. So, change of plans, I ended up hiking the Snake Divide Trail in the snow. Well, I'm like the only one up here. And unfortunately, the snow is making it really impossible to see the view. It's really pretty, the snow's falling through the trees, but you can't really see the mountains in the distance. But it's okay, it's still beautiful. to is a location called Yant Flat and it really was a feast for the eyes. It, it made me feel like I was a player in the game Candyland and then later I come to find out it's also known as Candy Cliffs which I think is the more appropriate name. The rock was so smooth and was a beautiful mixture of cream and orange sherbet. It was really a feast for the eyes. It was a short hike out there from the uh, dirt road that I had to drive to get there and you could basically just run all over the flats. Um, you kind of lost the trail because it just became a giant flat place to run around. Um, I couldn't believe how smooth they were and then how the colorful, more rugged peaks were in the background. It was, it was just a highlight of the trip. And it was yet another place that I basically had all to myself. So that's the benefit of finding the locations that are not the popular national parks. I did not intend to make Promontory Point a key destination of my trip. Actually, I just was driving through it. But as I drove along with the green mountains on one side and the Great Salt Lake on the other, it was just so beautiful. I kept stopping my car to take footage of how beautiful it was. There were herds of deer and cattle roaming around freely. It was just nice to see too because Utah is famous for having red rocks and white rocks and blue rocks. And then all of a sudden I'm in this lush green mountain watery type area. So it was just a nice contrast from everything else that I saw. Um, it sort of felt like Ireland or Scotland as I was driving through it. It was just such a fun drive. The US has so many amazing states. Michigan is beautiful. California is beautiful. New Jersey, did I mention Michigan? 
but Utah is in a league of its own. Pink lakes, salt deserts, hoodoos, mountains, I didn't even include the Mighty Five and places like Monument Valley. There is still so much more to see, so maybe I'll have to make a round two. But until next time, thanks for watching.